Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to have a fairly brief video, and the purpose of this video is to discuss and to simplify some of the concepts surrounding interconnection or networking of your test instrumentation, your bench test devices. And you can see here we've got a visual depiction of, uh, for example, a signal generator that generates a different waveform, and my oscilloscope, and any other instrumentation devices you might have, and we're showing them all connected to a computer that is running a software that you can use to program these devices. And it might be C Sharp, MATLAB, LabVIEW, Python, uh, but they are interconnected for the purpose of being able to control remotely these devices and to program them. So why would you need that? Well, in a future series coming up very soon, we're going to be showing how to do this using uh, software on our computer so that we can program these devices to perform what's called an SFRA or a sweep frequency response analysis, like we talked about in a previous series, basically allowing you to change the frequency coming out of this signal generator that we feed into our transformer and the output of that circuit is measured on our oscilloscope so that we can do an SFRA analysis of the transformer to determine whether it's good or bad. And ultimately, it will take the frequency and voltage values and plot voltage versus frequency SFRA analysis. So that's just one example of why you might need to interconnect and program your devices. Let's take a look at some of the basic concepts you're going to need to be aware of when we get into this networking and programming. Well, here again, I've got my uh, computer with C Sharp, MATLAB, LabVIEW, whatever software. And in order to communicate and control these devices, typically we have, like you have on your computer for any hardware, you have a driver. And a driver is basically a piece of software that allows you to interface whatever code you're running here with whatever hardware and software is on these devices. So all of your devices are going to need a driver that understands the code on your computer and also understands the code and the hardware on your device. We also see that different devices might have different communication protocols. My signal generator has USB, universal serial bus. Uh, my oscilloscope has Ethernet, local area network, Ethernet LAN. And it also has a USB connection. So um, you might have other devices that have what's called GPIB. So there are multiple different communication protocols. And ideally, if you're going to communicate with different devices, you need to have something, for example, in your drivers or in your software that recognizes these different communication protocols. What else is it going to need to recognize? Well, it's going to have to understand the different devices and how to deal with them through the drivers. So it's going to have to understand the different hardware. Um, also, these are going to be different manufacturers, probably. So um, different models, different manufacturers, you're going to have to be able to understand that. So as you can see, when you're talking about uh, networking and communicating and programming your different instrumentation, it can get kind of complicated. You're going to need software and drivers that understand the different hardware, the different protocols. Also, it would be nice, you know, if, for example, you want to gather data from this uh, signal generator, for example, what's the voltage, it would be nice to have a single common command that works not only in the signal generator, but also in this oscilloscope. So you can see, you know, you'd like to have standard commands, you'd like to have communication protocol knowledge, different drivers. So you can see when you're getting into networking and talking to many different devices, this can get kind of complicated. So the goal here is to kind of break this down into some basic concepts that should help you in the future as we go through the video showing you how to program this SFRA in these devices. Why else would you need to know about interconnecting and communicating and controlling these devices? Well, in the real world, you might have something like this, which is a, uh, an airliner. And in these airliners, the control system requires that there are a lot of measurement devices throughout the airplane that measure mechanical things such as mechanical strain or temperatures or speeds and that kind of thing. 
So in the real world, these are very, very important. And we have a series talking about control systems, what they are and how they work. And they're very, very important in the real world. You're going to have a lot of measurement devices connected over a network inside this plane that feeds back to the controller and to the pilot that is really, really important. So when you get into instrumentation and networking, it is extremely important in the real world. You can talk about factories, industrial facilities that have a lot of equipment and measurement devices. Again, extremely, extremely important. Now, another concept that's very important is that you understand the difference between standards and hardware and software. Standards are basically written agreed upon rules. So a group of experts gets together and decides, we want this to be standardized with a agreed upon set of rules to make it easier, to make our lives easier. So we know if we're going to be doing something like interconnecting our instrumentation, we all agree on how it's going to be done. So we don't have 25 different variations. But the standards are basically just a set of documentation that outlines agreed upon rules. That's different from hardware and software. Hardware and software are actual implementations of those rules if the manufacturer of the hardware and software decides to follow their rules, right? You don't necessarily have to follow the standards, but if you do, your hardware and software is probably going to follow those standards. And the hardware and software are implementations of those rules. So there's a big difference between the written rules and the actual implementation. Now in the software world, as we showed, there are drivers, which is basically software that is written to interface between your hardware and your software. We showed before we've got these drivers. We've got our software here and our hardware and firmware in the device. This allows you to access that and gives you kind of a common interface. So let's take an example of some of the standards and some of the implementations that you're going to be seeing. For example, there is this GPIB, which is a general purpose interface bus. It is a standard that defines an interface between software and hardware, your instrumentation. GPIB was developed back in the 1970s for interconnecting test equipment. Keep in mind, 1970s was before Ethernet LAN, local area network, was really popular. So this was a way to interconnect different instruments. Again, this was also before personal computers were really popular. This was mostly between different test devices, not really with the idea of connecting to a computer. There were some connections to mainframes, but in general, uh, we didn't have Ethernet LAN and we didn't have small computers, personal computers. The GPIB was defined in a standard called IEEE 488. IEEE means Institute for Electrical and Electronics Engineers. If you're like me, I've been an electrical engineer for about f over 45 years. Um, IEEE standards are extremely common in the electrical engineering world, and this is just one standard. So basically a bunch of engineers got together and defined this back in the 70s. What's a good standard interface connection between instrumentations? And you can see here is a hardware implementation of that standard. This is the GPIB connector, the IEEE 488 connector that was developed in this standard. Now, again, this is a hardware implementation of this standard. Now, later on, Hewlett Packard HP took this and adapted this interface to um, connect with personal or smaller computers. So again, there's a lot of evolutionary stuff here. This is back in the 70s and then it evolved to be able to talk to personal computers. And as you can imagine, this was before Ethernet LAN. So we're going to expect that there's going to be some evolution to allow this, um, in, this test equipment to connect to a local area network. Now there's also something you might see, which is called Skippy. And the name gives you a good indication of what it means. It is standard commands for programmable instrumentation. And we said before, wouldn't it be nice to have your software be able to write one command that works on any of these devices? Like if we wanted to grab the voltage, we should have one command that we can send to any of these devices and it works. So that's the purpose of Skippy, developing a list of commands for programmable instrumentation. Again, it's not a big, huge standard like you might expect, but it's just a list of standard commands. It was developed in the 90s, and as you'd imagine, it provides standards command, standard commands 
For example, if you want to measure DC voltage, you say measure colon voltage colon DC question mark and send that to the device and hopefully it will send back a voltage. Now here is a view in the back of my oscilloscope. And as we mentioned, GPIB was developed before local area networks were around. And you can see here something called LXI. And that is a standard associated with these new uh, Ethernet LAN connections that came about later on. LXI, as you can imagine, stands for Local Area Network Extensions for Instrumentation. So we had GPIB for older instruments, and now that we've got this cool new local area network, in the early 2000s, they decided to develop a standard that allows for the additional usage of local area network connections to the instrumentation. So it's a standard for connecting test instrument, instrumentation devices to a computer via Ethernet LAN. It defines the communication protocols for controlling test and measurement systems using Ethernet. And if you want to learn more about it, the standard, you can go to lxistandard.org and there's some really good background information in what's called an LXI primer. And here is the website, lxistandard.org. And here is the LXI primer. I encourage you to take a look. Really well done. Uh, history of LXI, benefits, LXI primer, um, LXI discovery tool. We're going to talk about that. Driver support. All right, so you know there's going to be drivers involved. LXI protocols. Um, there's a consortium, a group of people getting together that develops these standards. Um, LXI products, software drivers. All right, you're going to have drivers that drive the equipment using this LXI specifications, resources. So I encourage you to take a look at that really good way to understand. So it basically extends the GPIB that we talked about to make interconnection easier for consumers. For example, it uses the standard Ethernet cables that came about later on rather than special GPIB uh, IEEE 488 cables, integrates with USB, it has web interfaces where you can fire up a web page and, and find um, LXI devices on the network. And all devices in this LXI standard include what's called an IVI driver. And you're going to see a lot of that. And we're going to use that in the future to drive our devices. IVI is interchangeable virtual instrument, all right? So you can imagine it's kind of a software controller for your virtual instruments. And some instrumentation vendors have discovery tools like a web interface that allow you to find and identify LXI instruments on the network. We're not going to use that. We're going to um, use C sharp in our case, but again, you can use many different types of control mechanisms. So that's LXI. Now we also mentioned IVI, Interchangeable Virtual Instrument Standard and Drivers. That you can go to the IVI Foundation and there's some really good getting starting guides. So there's basically an instrument driver, a set of software routines that control read and write commands to a programmable instrument. Um, it provides a common API. If you've done any software, you know that that means application programming interface uh, across vendors and devices. So you can access different vendors and devices using these um, drivers. Um, for example, all IVI compatible multimeters can have their measurement read using the command IVI DMM measurement dot read. So it's making it easier for you to write software to uh, interface with your um, devices. It's a driver. Now, very important, down the bottom, it says supported by Microsoft Visual Studio C Sharp, C++, and Visual Basic. So this is going to be very, very useful to us since we're going to be writing in C Sharp. Um, it has some C Sharp um, solutions available, and it interfaces very well. So you can write a C Sharp solution so you can uh, control your, your IVI devices um, using C Sharp. So really very, very useful. Now also the IVI Foundation has created IVI class specifications that define the capabilities for drivers for the eight following eight instrument classes. So if you've done C Sharp object oriented programming or any other object oriented programming, you realize how nice it would be to have a class for each type of device. And in fact, they already have it. For example, for a digital multimeter, there is an IVI driver class IVI DMM for our oscilloscope 
IVI scope, waveform function generator, IVI FGen, and so on. Again, a wonderful aspect of this IVI that you can access them via these simple classes. Now, another thing you're going to see is Visa, Virtual Instrument Software Architecture, which is kind of a global software definition of your different devices. It's a standard, again, it's a standard for configuring, programming, and troubleshooting instrumentation systems using GPIB, VXI, PXI, Serial, Ethernet, and or USB. So it's kind of a global architecture to allow you to communicate with many different devices using different protocols. And we're going to make a lot of use of this Visa software architecture to control our devices. Visa I.O. Libra libraries come with instrumentation from all vendors of LXI. So since we have an LXI scope, we know there's going to be Visa I.O. libraries that will allow us to access it. In our case, we're going to use NI Visa, which is National Instruments, a very popular instrumentation company. They have their own Visa implementation, which provides support for customers using Ethernet, GPIB, serial, USB, and other types of instruments. It's an NI, National Instrument, National Instruments Instrumentation Driver, an implementation of Visa I.O. standard. It includes utilities, low-level control features, and examples to help you create your own application. Again, we're going to be able to download a Vis Microsoft Visual Studio C Sharp solution that allows us to interface with our oscilloscope very, very easily. So those are some of the basic concepts we're going to deal with in, in interfacing with our devices. Again, here's kind of an overview. You've got your application software. Ours is going to be C Sharp. You've got your IVI driver. Uh, utilizing Visa or client-side API. Um, you've got TCP IP, local area network. So you can start to see how these different concepts work together to, to allow you to have a very simple uh, application on your computer that deals with all of the different types of devices and communication protocol and different manufacturers to allow you to much more simply control your devices. And we're going to use that when we finish programming our devices, specifically our oscilloscope and our function generator, so that we can control it using our C-Sharp application. So that's about it for this one. Um, again, I encourage you to, to follow in the upcoming videos where we show you how we're going to control these devices so we can do SFRA tests. In the future, we can do many other types of tests. So I encourage you, if you're liking these videos, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. And most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.